closely, for the first is strong on this one. Listen as I tell you that the first casualty of war is truth, and the first casualty of football is the wee nippy winger who tries to make an ass of the pot belly defender. Planet football is at war with itself. The day of soccer, Mageddon, is upon us. Many questions must be asked. Many signs must be examined. Many voices must be heard in this epic struggle for validity. To find the answers to these and all the questions about football would take forever or the next 90 minutes. So join us now as we start a new chapter in an ever-changing story. Only an excuse. Episode 13 and a half. The Phantom Dennis. It's me, the lawman, eh? <laughs> Who were you expecting? Hugh McGregor? Yeah, that on the right. Yeah. I tell you something, right? I tell you something. People say to me all the time, you know, they say, they say, Dennis, because that's my name, you know, and uh, <laughs> also, I don't know if you know this, but uh, by using someone's name is a very good way of attracting their attention, you know? <laughs> they say, Dennis, seeing as how you're his uncle, can you get me Ewan McGregor's autograph? I say to them, no, no I can't. You're confusing me with Dennis Lawson, the actor. I'm Dennis Law, the mongoose. <laughs> you, they look at me as if I'm off my head and they leave, you know. But you know, for me, the big question about the Star Wars thing is the Empire. Just think of that, the Empire. Is it a better catalogue than K's? <laughs> do they do better outfits in it? I mean, look at this. Man at Remnant Kings. <laughs> Suits you, sir. Hey. <laughs> a bit tropical, there, you know. But you know, for me, the big question about the, the Star Wars thing, the thing that everyone remembers is the characters, isn't it? I mean, you've got, you've got Darth Vader. What a player he was, tell him. <laughs> good player, good player. Big tree backer, wee Jabba the Hutt. And what about Yoda? Oh, hey, hey. Pleased with him, I am not. Eh? <laughs> you like that one? Eh? Who did he learn to speak English from? Dr. Joseph Inglis, I don't know. <laughs> then, of course, there was Kenobi. Hmm? Old Obi-Wan himself. Now, not many people know this, but uh, he was a lonely man, was Obi. Very lonely man. Obi never married. Didn't have any kids. Maybe that had something to do with Obi only having the one Kenobi. I don't know. <laughs> well, you, can clap, you can clap along if you want, you know. Uh, we're here for a long, long time. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with this. This is a serious bit. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, was it a galaxy or was it a dairy milk? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> ages ago, the gods of football started fighting. The good gods wanted to be the beautiful game. The bad gods wanted to be the greedy game. I wonder who's winning right now, eh? Two separate forces, and ne'er the Shania Twain will meet. Hmm? <laughs> but that don't impress me much. <laughs> Can we blame everything that's going on with millennium madness? Well, I don't know. I mean, it all depends if you're talking about intermillennium or, or AC millennium, eh? <laughs> Both of whom I happen to know very well from my days playing for Chirino, you know, but uh, that's another story. So, before I nip into my Millennium Falcon and, uh, what are you laughing at? <laughs> so, the back. I'll get a ticket. Anyway, uh, I'm going to nip off for an intergalactic curry. I'm just going to ask you one thing. What about 
the National Stadium, eh? What about the new Hamden, you know? Now, I saw it for the first time the other day, and I thought, you know, it's nice, it's nice, you know, but uh, they've still got to put... <laughs> yes, um, they've still got to put the finishing touches to it, you know? They've still got to put up the big sign, the one that says, White Elephant, you know? Eh? <laughs> And talking of stadiums, I mean, what about Clyde Bank? Poor Clyde Bank. I mean, what a carry-on they're trying to have them trying to get a home. I mean, they, they've looked everywhere. I mean, a, fa a fan came up to me the other day, and he, he says, Dennis, Dennis, he says, what do you think of Carlisle? I said, well, I, I thought he was brilliant in the full Monty. Hey! <laughs> Football. Football. Fans of my generation, the generation that invented the noble art of prattling on about big men, wee men, and the beautiful game, will remember with great fondness their first football match. The queues of men in coats and bonnets, the being lifted over the turnstile, the standing, and the repetitive neck strain from trying to see the inventive use of expletives, the inventive use of rolled up newspapers, <laughs> the overpowering whiff of fags, bevy, and 50,000 relieved bladders. <laughs> okay, it wasn't perfect. In fact, to be honest, it was enough to give you the dry book. <laughs> but. It was most definitely the punter's game, the people's game. Unlike today, it's the people way money's game. Look at the obscene amounts of dosh in football today. Look at the wages no more than average players can expect to earn. You can't help but ponder what would guys like Jimmy Baxter or, or Jinky Johnson be worth today? Probably nothing. <laughs> One week of today's wages, you'd never see the pair of them again. <laughs> the undeniable truth is that when it comes to the game, punter or pundit, there is no difference. We are all Jock Thompson's mugs. Think about it. Football cannot trust the, the yous, me's, and them's of this world with knowledge. Because knowledge is power. And power is to be struggled for. <laughs> Hi, Jim White here. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Sky's new anchor man. And I did say anchor. <laughs> and, and we are previewing the coming season as we ask who will win the championship, the League Cup, and the Scottish Cup. But let's move on from Rangers now. <laughs> And look at some of the other teams who could, if the sons of... <laughs> if the sons of William were to go temporarily insane for 90 minutes... <laughs> give Rangers a run for their money. Charlie Nicholas is with me. Uh, Charlie, mate, as far as the championship goes, Celtic looked good early on, albeit, and I, I mean this with the greatest respect, <laughs> against Pish. Um, <laughs> but are the beggars um, <laughs> sliding back to their old failings? I mean, are they, mate? Sure they are, Charlie. Eh, eh, sure they are. <laughs> 
endemically so. <laughs> and not so much in spades as in quality shovels. <laughs> For me, Celtic are a bit lacklustre at the moment. The luster is definitely lacking. <laughs> and that for me speaks top drawer volumes from the top drawer, <laughs> top of the three quality wise. <laughs> but to be fair, James, what you've got to remember is that this team is, needs time to jellyfy. <laughs> because not long ago there was uncertainty, for certainty, and uh, <laughs> about. What was going to happen, power-wise, at Celtic? Memory-wise, who can forget Fergus McCann? With respect to... Uh... <laughs> With respect to the offer being made by... Uh... <laughs> Mr... Well, you're there. Um, <laughs> with respect to the offer being made by Mr. Kenny Dalglish, uh, Mr. Jim Kerr, and, uh, and the other bloke, um, <laughs> all I can say is, uh, do you think I'm simple-minded? Um, <laughs> now, uh, first of all, let, let's, let's just say here, this isn't just about money. It's about a lot of money. Um, <laughs> and as long as I am El Presidente of Celtic Football Club, uh, I will say who smells the coffee and when. Uh, <laughs> or to put it in football terms, it's my ball and nobody's getting to play with it. Uh, <laughs> is the matter closed? Well, um, I don't know. I mean, you'd better ask Kenny Dalgleish. What's important here is that we, we keep the heat <laughs> and don't start trading insults. For example, I heard somebody criticise Mr. McCann's attitude comparing to Mr. Milosevic. Personally, I think that's a terrible thing to do. Must have caused a lot of hurt to Mr. Milosevic. <laughs> Me, myself, personally, I, I'm being philosophical about it. But Jim Kerr, he's pure billing. a bloke, a legend, a Celtic legend, who comes to the table in good faith with a vision of the future for this once great club, and no one even says, let's get the kettle on. <laughs> Not even as much as a biscuit. <laughs> Not even as much as a chocolate hobnob. <laughs> and I'm sure everyone in Scottish football is concerned about this. This is me, 
Chick Young, standing where the amateurs here. Pish myself up and rubbing my hands, dancing a jig, a Northern Irish jig. at the sad, sad news that once again the Tims have shot themselves in the foot with a bazooka! <laughs> what this must be doing to the morale of the players who were such totally sensational, abject failures last season. <laughs> Paul Lambert, he should really be a Rangers player, what do you make of this tawdry situation? <laughs> Smell the glove. <laughs> Smell the glove, eh? Surprise, sir, bloody prize. <laughs> Hold on. Yes, what's that? <gasps> totally sensational news. Astonishing! I am quite literally under the moon. <laughs> this is one small step for Celtic, one massive pisser for Scottish football. McCann moves out, McDonald moves in, enter the dream team, Dalgleish and Barnes. Please, God, make them be rotten. <laughs> Especially John Barnes. <laughs> well, uh, what can I say? Um... <laughs> Will I be buying players? Uh, the, the answer to that is yes. Uh, will I be selling players? Uh, the answer to that is also yes. Some players will be moving on. Uh, <laughs> will I be giving youth a fling? Graham Tricks tried that. Look what happened to him. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Castle Grayskull, with their management team in with the bricks, or I suppose you could say a, a well-established part of the masonry. <laughs> they could afford the luxury of conducting a poll to discover who was the greatest ever Rangers player. Gorham, Gascoigne, Greg. And who was the greatest ever Rangers Flute player, <laughs> Gorham, Gascoigne, and Greg. <laughs> Current boss, Dick Advocat, had his own views. What the world? <laughs> It's a very difficult thing to pick. Um, <laughs> after all, you're all your many years and many players who have played for Rangers uh, in this time. Uh, also, what is what is the greatest ever player mean? Uh, is it man of greatest skill like Jim Baxter or Willie Henderson or Jim Denny? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I, th I think the greatest ever should be uh, should be the man who does most and give all his time and everything for the club over Rangers. So I would say since. Since I've been here, the, the greatest stranger ever has been uh, Jim White. <laughs> Thanks, Gaffer. What a character. <laughs> there was an assured confidence about New Rangers. They were still a bit... No one likes us, we don't care, but in a friendly sort of way. <laughs> they seem ready at last to cast aside the old traditions and embrace the concept of expedient ecumenicism. <laughs> but then the pus-filled pluck of sectarianism 
reared its ugly yellow head. <laughs> As popular Ibrox folk singer, <laughs> Donald Finlay, <laughs> is captured on video giving it Yahoo to the Billy Boys. <laughs> Arguments raged as to just what was more offensive, the song itself or Finlay's singing. <laughs> the QC leapt to his own defense. It was a mistake, my lad, a grave error of judgment. I realize now I should have waited till they'd switched the bloody camera off. <laughs> but I have to point out there were mitigating circumstances. Rangers had just completed the treble. I was pissed. <laughs> and I'd just been chucked by Paddy Christie. <laughs> The Celtic faithful seized the moral high ground and called for understanding, forgiveness, and the reintroduction of the death penalty. <laughs> but the tale was to take a surprise twist when, jumping to Finlay's defense, came the only man they arguably disliked even more than the accused himself, Michael Kelly. Listen to me because I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if Donald Finlay is a bigot, then my name isn't Michael Kelty. <laughs> sorry, 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 Kelly, sorry. My name isn't Michael Kelly. Can we do that again? <laughs> the whole nation was shocked and surprised by Donald Finlay's indiscretion. Apart from everyone in the Edmondson Club, Lark Hoyle Loyal RSC, and James McMillan. <laughs> but should they have been, given what had happened a few weeks earlier and what was labeled the championship decider? The so called shame game. Graham Soonis's kind of match. Can I just say something here? <laughs> they call it the shame game. What was the shame about it? <laughs> Rangers won, end of story. <laughs> okay, at the end, some of the Rangers lads indulged in a bit of good-natured blown kisses at the Celtic supporters. <laughs> and they did a mock huddle. But surely it's the reasonable right of every true sportsman to say, get it right up, you. <laughs> to the opposition at the end of the match. Now, I would expect my fellow P45 holder, <laughs> Tommy Burns, <laughs> to totally disagree with that. <clears throat> <laughs> to see Celtic Football Club involved in such a debacle. Uh, let's be perfectly honest here. Uh, it wasn't about football. It was about pride and passion, commitment and bigotry <laughs> and hatred 
in violence, in lager, in wine, in thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. You <laughs> broke my heart forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> I, 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 I saw something that day at Celtic Park that uh, I only hope to God I never see again. Scott Marshall wearing the hoops. <laughs> but uh, for me, it was all down to inconsistency. A Celtic fan takes a dive for the top tier. And gets a ban. Rangers player takes a dive in the box. Gets a penalty. <laughs> and I, I wonder if my, my old uh, adversary, Walter Smith, would go along with that. Well, obviously, particularly at this present moment. No. <laughs> Obviously, you know, the law was made of, you know, Rangers doing the mock huddle at the end of the match, you know. But in terms of winding up the, the Celtic supporters, you know, and, and really rubbing it in, the huddle we did when I was boss was, was much better. <laughs> now, if you were a Celtic fan, the type who examines the opening titles of sports scene or Scott sport and counts the number of Celtic goals as compared to the number of Rangers goals. <laughs> Watching the match unfold at Celtic Park that day, then you just might have been thinking, Celtic are a goal and a man down, and Rangers have a crucial corner. Passions boiling and sweary words abound. Punters are on the pitch, loose change has been chucked. Suddenly, Blood flows from a napper wound, and Brother Dallas is down. <laughs> Amidst the mass of mental mayhem, the fallen ref rubs his bloodied head and looks at his hands. His red hands. <laughs> What thoughts run through his mind? Is he thinking, I better try to defuse this situation? Or is he thinking, okay, there might be a bit of soapy bubble around at the house tonight? <laughs> but what the hell, I'm needing new windows anyway. Corner comes over, clumsy challenge by Reseth. So it's new. <laughs> Vinbar ends up and he's down under. Penalty, 2-0. Game set and championship to Elizabeth's 11. <laughs> well, if you were a Rangers fan, you might be thinking... <laughs> Your beauty! <laughs> Simply the best! Totally superb, a sensational triumph of good over evil. <laughs> Celtic Football Club must now be crushed and banished to the bogs for this outrageous display of canny takeitness. <laughs> Stephen Maddy, oh, sorry, uh, Mahi, Fire Squad has to be Man of the Match, Neil McCann. Because his inclusion in Luther's Legions must make this defeat all the more bitter a lemon for the Celtic fans to suit. There's definitely something in this old firm phenomenon. It gets daftered by the decade. We are stuck in this us and them society. But do we actually know who us 
and them is anymore. Seems to me the Uzzies are more like thems. Well, the thems are more like Uzzies than they've ever been. Think about it. A big proddy team that's full of Catholics. A big Catholic team that's full of prodies. A very Scottish kind of madness that touches us all. But without the O firm, realistically, what would our game be? Let's ask Hugh Keevens. In my opinion. <laughs> And I stress it is only an opinion. <laughs> I, as a celebrity weatherman, <laughs> put it to you that a deep depression is settling on Scottish football. I put it to you, Davy Proven, the old firm are way, 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 way ahead of everyone. And to give the others a chance, both Rangers and Celtic should be handicapped. Hello, Hugh. Yes, you will, Hugh. <laughs> you who? <laughs> the old firm already play Martin Beekost and Craig Moore in their teams. You can't get any more handicapped than that. <laughs> sure, right. Um, I'm going to bring in Graham Spears now. Spearsy. Like me, you were a prefect in the big school. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about the old firm this season, Spearsy, mate? Well, to, to be voracious and without meaning to peregrinate or be unduly verbose, uh, <laughs> I personally believe that the old firm are invincible but not unbeatable. Uh, <laughs> and it's up to the other teams to do their bit to make the league interesting in a, in a quirky, funny, diary piece sort of way. Uh, to cite an instance, uh, I happen to know that last season, Paul Sturrock told his team that every match would be a cup final. Then he had explained to wee Joe Miller, this didn't mean that he'd get a, a run in an open top bus. We Joe, I know, was devastated. <laughs> sure. So, uh, <laughs> talking about cup, cup finals, what about this Scottish Cup? I've been looking at the newspapers recently, and this Kilnocky team that are managed by Robert Duval seem to be on a good run. They've got a striker, Jackie McQuillan, and honest mates, he's a dead spit for Coisty. <laughs> do you think they're in with a chance, Charlie, mate? Do you? Can they win the cup? Can they? Can they, Charlie? What do you think? Indefinitely, no, James. They are, for me, beyond a shadow of a certainty, only a kid on team. Right, so let me get this straight, mate. It's only a movie, and, and Ali McCoy is only pretending to be a footballer. <laughs> Just like he does at Kilmarnock. <laughs> I'm going to bring in Alan McAnally here. Rambo, how's it hanging, mate? <laughs> no, see, eh. Uh... <laughs> Watch it, Whitey, because uh, I have to say, you know, well, you've got to say, sorry, guys, you know, but when I was in Bayern with Munich in Germany with Bayern, Hey, come on, let's not kill ourselves here. We all well, look at it another way. But I'm just going to say, I'm going to throw down the omelette here and say, <laughs> I'll probably get pelters for it, but no, I'm saying, I'm just saying the Scottish Cup draw could be fixed to favour the old firm, especially your Celtics and your Rangers. <laughs> hold on, hold on, Rambo, you're well out of order. I have attended many draws that have favoured Rangers. I mean, uh, sorry. <laughs> the old firm. And I can totally sensationally reveal that it's hee-haw jiggery-pokery. Anyway, 
How could they fix the draw? You've seen the big blue balls. Hey, Chico, stop bragging me, man. Hey, sorry. <laughs> Couldn't resist it. But seriously, Chi, seriously. You know as well as me how it can be done using the old hot balls and cold balls. Rambo, I know all about hot balls and cold balls, and I can assure you neither Craig Brown or Jerry McNee were involved in any way. Every year, everybody says it would be great if somebody could mount a challenge to Celtic and Rangers. Nothing serious, mind. <laughs> Just up until the last month of the season, when hopefully their bottle will crash, <laughs> leaving the old firm with a clear run-in. Last season it was Sandy Saints and the Sons of Williamson. <laughs> Who will it be this year? Dundee United? I don't know. Can you take a team with David Hanna in it seriously? <laughs> How about Hibs? Some people say they're a team of old crocs. They've even got a guy, Dirk Lehman, whose ears are stuck on with insulating tape. <laughs> Realistically, with their SMG millions, maybe the only team capable are hearts. You can't say that whispering Jim Jeffries is not ambitious. It's, it's difficult sometimes. Uh, I've, got, <laughs> I've got a seemingly endless supply of fiery, skin-headed, cheap youngsters <laughs> coming through Actine Castle. And I've got the, the dark, hirsute, expensive continental star, Banjo. What do I do? Do I pick my baldy nuts? <laughs> or do I play the hairy wanjo? <laughs> One team I predict it won't be though are the once mighty Aberdeen. <laughs> At the banquet that is Scottish football, the Dons were once prime Aberdeen Angus steak. Now they're reduced to a quivering mass of potted hoch. <laughs> the fans called for Chairman Millen to move on, but we, Stuarty, remained Stubbornly defiant. Uh, the, there, there, there is money available uh, at Aberdeen. Um. Yeah. Not, not that money guarantees success or, uh, or even a decent wig. Uh. <laughs> But I'm very optimistic that laughter will return to Aberdeen, and uh, I put that all down to Abe. That's Mr. Abe. <laughs> who we booked for our end of season dance. <laughs> just after Christmas. Of course, uh, Scovdal wasn't her first choice, and uh, despite what the newspaper said, uh, either was Ozzy Ardiles. To be, uh, <laughs> to be fully honest, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm it's a bad idea, uh, so I, I say no to Aberdeen. Uh, then uh, Stuart Mill, uh, the chairman, he called me up, and he, he said that uh, after six months, uh, I am... Uh, I'm guaranteed to be sick uh, with, the, <laughs> with the big payoff. Uh, so I, I say, I say to him, I say, uh, if it's like Loden, when can I start? <laughs> of course, the man we really all wanted to see back at Everdeen uh, was Sir Alex Ferguson. 
Very proud of my fellas. <laughs> very proud of my fellas. And very hard on my fellas too. Very hard. But uh, sometimes you've got to be hard to be proud. And uh, that's just no harm in the old club Aberdeen. And, uh, personally, I, I blame the defence. It's disgraceful. In my days, you know, the, the defence was, was as secure as a, as a bung in a safe. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I love the people at Aberdeen. I'm, I'm very proud of them. Uh, people crack jokes about Aberdonians being mean. And it's not true because they were, they were very generous to me and, and so, so appreciative of what I did for them. They, they, they sold me the freedom of the city. <laughs> Proud. I, I, I could write a book about it. <laughs> in fact, I already have. And um, I can promise you there's absolutely nothing in it about Paul Gascoigne. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester United, they've got more money than a horse can shite. <laughs> <laughs> B, Sky B tried to buy them over, but they was referred to the Monopoly's board. Well, I tell you, I've played Monopoly. I've never seen Man United on the board. <laughs> Scottishness. Being Scottish. Is that changing too? How do we feel about ourselves? Qualifying for World Cups and Gubbing the English weren't good enough anymore. We had to become a real country in the real world with a real parliament made up of ex councillors ex weathermen <laughs> and current junior footballers <laughs> like Tommy Sheridan. <laughs> Aye, Tommy Sheridan solemnly swear that from this day on I will fight tirelessly to ensure that in the future, every household in Scotland will have its own sunbed. <laughs> Has this new political freedom imprisoned us? Has the notion of a nation again rechanneled our passion, our fervour, our blind allegiance away from international humiliation. I'm sure Craig Brown would disagree. Mind you, he's had more than just football in his mind recently. <laughs> I even heard he's got a movie coming out. It's called Feeble Powers, The Manager Who Shagged Me. <laughs> Very funny, but uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm late. So I was just, uh, I was just posting a letter to to Gerald McNee. Um, <laughs> seriously though, I, I ask you, what's the world coming to when a when a bloke can't give it loudly with an anti Tim Ditty anymore, <laughs> without being labelled a bigot? Um, it was a wee joke on the phone. That's all. I mean. I don't even know all the words to hello, hello, we are the William boys. But, um, anyway, let's be perfectly honest here. When it comes to, to songs, many people find Flower of Scotland offensive, uh, but only English people, so that doesn't really matter. <laughs> Craig Thing, me. <coughs> what a character. <laughs> Bit of a gimp magnet, too. <laughs> Go on your cell, wee man. Um, <laughs> but Charlie, mate, these days, he does have problems finding enough Scots to put a team together, doesn't he, amigo? For certainty, muchacho. <laughs> In terms of internationally picking players, nationality-wise, Scottishly, we are quality shot, to be fair. 
I think it's time to question the traditional, traditionally wise. And look, I knew it fields are further. Computerly speaking, for me, it's time to hit the internet. <coughs> www.pish.com. <laughs> So, Charlie, me old mucker, just to recap, Rangers are great, Celtic are not, the, the rest of Scottish football can forget it, and as for Manchester United, okay, they won the FA Premiership, the FA Cup and the Champions League, but is that really as good as the Scottish domestic treble? <laughs> and are they as good this season as they were last season? Don't forget they've lost their inspirational keeper and replaced them with an unpredictable nutter. Charlie, what would you do if you had Bosnich? Only one thing to do, James. Just give him a right good scratch. <laughs> Star Wars or Star Bores? Power games? And who's to blame? QCs and FTPs. Scotland the brave, Scotland the grave. And we dug it all by ourselves. We need time to rethink, time to regroup, time to grab ice cream and sweeties and down a swift one in the bar. Then brace ourselves for a second half of zeros and villains, myths and managers, Coconuts and commentators, as once again, we question the eternal answer. Is it only a game, or is it only an excuse? It's everything, it's nothing. It's the crack of dawn, it's the dead of night. It's a smiling fist. Such I'll say that again. <laughs> it's a smiling face, it's a gritting fizzog. It's a flight of fancy in a golden winged eagle. It's the wee bits of chewing gum and fag ends choking the urinal of life. <laughs> it's better than sex. It's worse than a sore ass. <laughs> what is this thing called football? Right, so, what is this thing called football? Answers on a postcard to having a Scooby competition, <laughs> Sky Sports, Cow Caddens, <laughs> London, <laughs> or phone 0889977. That's 0997788888. <laughs> And make sure the person who pays the bill doesn't catch you. Because <laughs> this call will cost you a fortune. <laughs> right, some news just in. Referee John Rowbottom has revealed why he abandoned the Monday night's match between Motherwell and Hearts. Apparently it was because he feared for the safety of the players. He was worried that John Spencer or Pat Nevin might drown in one of the puddles. <laughs> Following the circumstances of their last minute equaliser at Ibrox, Bayern Munich striker Santa Cruz is changing his name to Santa Claus. <laughs> And 
finally on the transfer front, Kilmarnock have signed French striker Christoph Erection. <laughs> Sorry, that's, uh, that's Christoph Cockard. <laughs> what am I like? Um, <laughs> Charlie, mate, getting back to the question, what is this thing called football? Have you any idea what it is? Charlie, mate? And definitely, no. <laughs> if you're talking, say, in terms of kicking a ball football-wise, then, yes, I could haphazard this, I guess, but... <laughs> if you are in fact, speaking metaphorically-wise, <laughs> in metaphors, or... <laughs> or metafives, then... <laughs> Then I am stumped big time. Uh, this is maybe one for the Old Testament pundits like uh, Methuselah or Moses or Jerry McNee. <laughs> Bin this nonsense now. <laughs> what passes for football these days is a disgrace. The beautiful game has been ruined by jump up so called journalists sucking up to the stars, as I said to Pelly just the other day. <laughs> I'm telling you, it'll end in tears. Watch this space, or get a life, or better still, watch a video of Dennis Law, the only Scotsman who could represent Brazil at mongoose chasing. <laughs> well, you know, as you say, you know, it's, uh, you know, I gotta say, you know, it's, uh, it's very flattering to be, to be linked with Brazil, you know? Even if it was by Jerry McNee, you know, but uh, I was going to say, you know, I'm going to be honest with you here, you know, I, I don't know if I'd be eligible to play for Brazil, you know, because uh, I was born in Aberdeen, you know, and uh, as far as I know, and I could be wrong here, you know, I mean, uh, Aberdeen is nowhere near South Africa, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> only kidding you, aren't you? Anyway, um, anyway, let's get back to Willie McIlvenny's question. What is this thing called football? What is this thing called football? Can I phone a friend? Fifty-fifty, <laughs> 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 50, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what is this thing called football? It's simple. It's simple. It's goals. Football is goals. That was the currency in Dennis land. Yeah. <laughs> How good was the low man? Well, you've heard the expression, it only takes a second to score a goal. With me, you could have that time. Tell you, remember that back healer I scored for Manchester City against Manchester United? Yeah? You want to see it? <laughs> you want to see it again? Yeah! That's how good I was, you know. And I tell you, <laughs> if Sir Matt Busby was alive today, he'd tell you. I was at Manchester United. Uh, Dennis Law was, was so fast. He could play a one-two with himself. <laughs> Players today, I, mean, I heard a rumor that Duncan Ferguson's career was under threat. You have to ask, what career? <laughs> and if the boy recovered from serious injury, he'd put a wing of a hospital out of business. <laughs> now, okay, he might be dead now, but. Uh, Bill Shankly is still fitter than Duncan Ferguson. <laughs> Money, you see, is a, is a form of madness. It makes Diddy stick the players 
Managers think they're messiahs, and agents think they're jammy so-and-sos. Uh, <laughs> in my day, it was much more honest and trusting than there was no thinking as, as agents, you know, because there was nothing to get 20% of. <laughs> it was much more honest and trusting then. If Liverpool wanted to sign a player, it was all done by a handshake. If that didn't work out, we took him outside and gave him a severe doing. <laughs> Great, great days. <laughs> Am I right? Huey McIlvany. <laughs> Shanks. What a character. And Matt. What a style. And Jock. The big man, football man, and the players they coached, they were football men too. Not preening pampered foreign mercenaries, but dyed in the wool, small minded Scotsman, whose only yearning was to exploit and be exploited for the jersey. Forget your loudrops, your lassons, your conchelsis. <laughs> Give me a Binny, a Toker, and a McClardy any day. <laughs> <laughs> Taxi for McIlvany. <laughs> another century, another millennium, another season, another reason for making Whoopi and picking our all-time greatest ever Scottish select of all time or even longer. <laughs> so, here I go. First up, the man between the sticks, the man they call the goalie. Yes, you've guessed it. My choice would have to be Peter McCloy. <laughs> I would then play five in my back four. <laughs> Parini, Moore, Amoruso, Henry and Wigmar. <laughs> In midfield, Mel Sterling. <laughs> and up front, Super Ali himself. Yes, Ali Scott. <laughs> Alongside Roger Hind, Dennis Setterington, Billy Urquhart, Mark Falco, Eric Bo Diddley, and Pedro Van Vossen. <laughs> How many is that? Ach, does he matter? <laughs> That, for me, is a team capable of playing anyone. Never said anything about beating them, though. <laughs> Cheers, chick. <laughs> what a load of pish. <laughs> I mean, how can you leave out Ludo? I mean, right, Charlie, mate? For me, for certainty, albeit cutely so, one of the prerequisitionals of being in the all-time greatest Scotland team ever should be perhaps controversially that the players are Scottish. That would incline me to go in spades for your classic Celtic 67 lineup. But I'd have Joe Felipe in for Jim Craig. <laughs> I'd have Wayne Biggins in for Stevie Chalmers. <laughs> and I'd have Stuart Slater in for contravening the Trade Descriptions Act. <laughs> With that, I'm sure, knighthood-wise, Sir Alex Ferguson might concurrently agree. Yeah, here's Charlie Nicholas. Great player. Great player. <laughs> Scotland was full of great players. The government was full of great players. <laughs> Harmony Row Boys Club was full of great players. Me, great player. <laughs> Even Aberdeen was full of great players. Uh, William Miller, Alex McKeish, Ryan Irvin. <laughs> That's something that always amazed me about Big Brian. <laughs> he could find God, but he could never find a forward with a pass.
And talking of our Heavenly Father, I just say something here that I think is very, very true. <laughs> Money is ruining our game. Well, look at Anelka. He's just been sold for 25 million. 25 million. He hasn't had a hit since Japanese boy. <laughs> The lunatics have taken over the asylum. The clowns have taken over the cash and carry. Dosh rules okay. Perceptions are changing. It's football even a sport anymore. These days, who is best qualified to answer our football queries? Bob Cram says, now you know, or showbiz Sam? <laughs> Is it really all glamour, glitz, gold and gluttony? Or have we all just been sold an almighty dummy? Is the truth today the same as it always has been? That your football is really only as good as your commentators. Woof, Wendell! <laughs> A very good afternoon for me, Archie McPherson, here at Celtic Park for what promises to be a highly entertaining match where it's Moravchek to Berkovic, to Moravchek, to Berkovic, to Moravchek, to Berkovic, to Lambert, to Berkovic, to Moravchek. Looks like Berkovic back to Moravchek. You know, I. I feel that not only have we lost a great tradition of commentators, sadly we don't hear the likes of Ken McRobb and Jock Brown anymore, but even more sadly, we do hear a lot of Doogie McDonald. Now here's a chance for Hot Rod Rodney Walls. He's got Dan Eden Lorena in support. Mamma Mia, Italian Stallion Amaruzzo screaming for him. He squares it to George Albert on goal! <laughs> A stinky body. Um, <laughs> later on, I'll be wetting myself as we discuss the, the number of goals Michael Moles will score for Rangers in the Champions League. <laughs> Incidentally, Charlie, have you, uh, have you noticed that as Michael is running out of the tunnel, he, uh, he kisses his ring? To be honest, James, I didn't realise he was a contortionist. <laughs> Rangers qualifying for the Champions League preempted a state of hyperbole. You'll not understand that word. Um, <laughs> and over the top jingoism reminiscent of what surrounded the British Expeditionary Force in 1914 and the Scotland World Cup squad in 1978. On the Saturday following the match in Parma, Lodge Sports Scene. <laughs> entered into the street party spirit of the occasion by sending out a camera crew just to let Ranger supporters tell us how they were feeling. Sports journalism at its very best. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shut it, you. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes, 
the Glasgow Rangers, the Jazz, the Teddy Bears, the Sons of William, and the magnificent Champions League. Just what are the chances of the boys winning it and finally shutting up the Celtic fans once and for all? Can we do it, Mr. Advocat, you old Dutch Grandmaster? <laughs> What 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 uh, <laughs> what yes, uh, it's a typical group, but not impossible group. Uh, it's called Group F, not Group F off. Uh, <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear that, boys and girls? What a totally sensational answer! Quite superb. Some man and what? So, what about the opposition? Just who are the wasters that stand between Rangers <laughs> and deserved glory? <laughs> Valencia, PSV Eindhoven, Bayern Munich. Let's run through the opposition. Preferably with a sword. <laughs> Especially those jammy Spanish donkeys, Valencia. <laughs> what happened? Don Reno Gattuso. Well, you were supposed to put a a horse's napper in the boss's bed or something. <laughs> Chico, you don't even think to call me Godfather. <laughs> yes, I put a horse's head in the boss's bed. And yes, I tell Valencia to go easy on Rangers. Thank goodness they did. Um. <laughs> I only hope Mr. Advocat knows more about PSV. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, PSV, very well. Uh, they got a very dangerous player in Luke Nillis. Uh, we took a very dangerous player in Ian Ferguson. <laughs> Luke Hackett. <clears throat> That's our in-depth analysis of Valencia and PSV Eindhoven complete. But what about the German mob? Do we happen to know anybody who played for those spawny Bayern Munich cheats? <laughs> oh, hey, hey, Chico, listen, hey. I'm telling you, I know the Bayern lads very well from my days back in Germany with Bayern in Munich in Germany. <laughs> and I can tell you, you know, they were, they were not happy about coming to Ibrox. And I was talking to Big Ugintala and, uh, <laughs> and Jan Wouters, two great, great, good, good personal friends of mine. And they were, they were saying to me, they were saying, Alan, Nelly. Big, big Nelly, uh, <laughs> we are not happy about coming to Ibrox, but okay, a draw, eeksy peeksy, you know, late equaliser, you know, a signal, but that means nothing, I'm telling you, nothing, because this group is still up for grabs, and I think, I think, I'm going to say the crucial, the crucial factor for Rangers, Valencia, and PSV, all incidentally, good, 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 great <laughs> personal friends of mine, is... Who can go to Munich and beat Bayern in their own Germany? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Cheers, Rambo. <laughs> Thanks for those words of comfort. <laughs> Moving on to the UEFA Cup. Ugh, I can't be asked. <laughs> you did, Davy. Hello, Chick. Yes, Chick. Well, Chick, I'll let you get back to brown nosing dick, Chick. Um, <laughs> What people forget, uh, there, is, there is a lot of money to be made from the UEFA Cup too. I, I know for a sheer fact that our clubs were looking to make a mint, but sadly this game is all about tactics and not about Tic Tacs. <laughs> Truth is stranger than fiction, but fiction is no stranger to football reporting. Exclusive revelations and ridiculous rumors stand 
side by side by guarding the citadel of soccer hackdom. While inside, the fans with typewriters have sold their souls for a free half-time pie and a chairman's mobile phone number. All we have to do is break free from the spell and to think for ourselves. One day, we will all reach the twilight of our years. And as we look back, what will each of us remember about the game we have loved all our lives? Everything or just the recorded highlights? <laughs> One sublime moment, like Jim Baxter playing Keepy Uppy at Wembley in 67, or the entire career of Crawford Bapti. <laughs> Can I just say something here? When I think back over my career, it's not the goals or the medals I remember, it's the injuries. <laughs> George McCluskey. <laughs> Siggy Johnson. And that Stout Bucharest player. What about you, Walter? Honestly, I'll tell you that. Present moment, I'm not, I'm not looking back because, you know, I'm enjoying the, the, the challenge here at Ellen. You know, I've I done particularly Ellen, you know, there was to be done at Rangers. And, and you know, I needed, obviously, you know, a completely fresh change. So that's why I'm doing here, you know, with Archie Knox and Richard Goff and Alec Clellan. <laughs> Do you, have, do you have any memories, Kenny? <laughs> memories? <laughs> Could be. Could not be. <laughs> to be honest, I'd rather not look back. I'd rather look forward to what's happening now here at Celtic. It's the start of a new era. New way of looking at things. New way of doing things. And I'll not be influenced by what's happened in the past. I'll do things my way. So, smell the glove. <laughs> That's for what Dr. Bengals is smelling. <laughs> You'd better ask him. <laughs> yes, he's, he's good for memories. Uh, <laughs> especially to remember them. Uh, of course, in, in, in my life, I have many, many memories. But the greatest one of all would, would have to be... <laughs> I think it's someone brought up in the traditions or the good traditions, uh, you know, you know, the, the bad traditions of uh, also the football club. Uh, it would be very, 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 very true to say that uh, the, the first one is always something special. So my, my, my best memory is my first Holy Communion. <laughs> What was yours, Mr. Uh, Mr. President? Well, it's only to be honest. What do I say? What do I say? <laughs> oh, that's better. Um, <laughs> to be honest, Tommy, uh, my, my first... My first was very special to me, too. Uh, my first million, that is. <laughs> One of my best football memories, though, would be going going along to, to Selly Park when I was about 19 or 20, uh, and helping Brother Walfred serve up the soup. <laughs> to the, the, the poor unfortunates. Uh, you know, I, I often wonder what, what Walfred would have said if he discovered I was charging him two and six a plate. <laughs> oh, look, uh, Craig Thingley's got something to say. 
Well, to be honest, uh, I, if I might be so bold, I'd, I'd rather, if you don't mind, not look back, but, uh, but look forward, because despite my laid-back manner and uh, the cheery wee face of putting things, um, <laughs> let me assure you uh, that I'm as desperate as the next man to, for Scotland to qualify for... <laughs> for Euro 2000 in, in Holland and Belgium. Especially Holland, because I'm... <laughs> I'm quite keen to visit Amsterdam. Uh, <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, uh, Sir, Sir Alexander Fergie has, has got something to say. <laughs> Very poor, my pals. <laughs> I'm very, very proud of my memories, very proud. See, what, you, what you've got to realise is that people don't understand what, what a difficult job being a professional footballer is. But I know what it takes. Uh, so not only do I have the utmost respect for, for them, I, I'd also never hear a word spoken against it, anyone who's, who's played football at the highest level. Because I'm, I'm ever, I have to say I'm very proud of, of every player I've worked with. Apart from Gordon Strack, and he's a wee shite. <laughs> Are you watching? Are you watching? Are you watching anyone? We look, but do we see? We hear, but do we listen? We smell, but do we show? <laughs> do we accept collective responsibility for making the game what it is today? Or do we wash our hands with soccer swarfiga? Isn't it time we took a long, hard look at ourselves and asked how we really feel about the round ball game. Are we true believers or ambivalent atheists in the faith of our football? Do we accept with growing cynicism the well-worn excuses as to why our game has to be this way? Or do we rise up in revolt against our misrulers, change from smart asses to Spartacuses and reclaim the game as our own. No longer to, to sit back and allow the pundits to prevail, accede to their creed and be eclipsed by the dark side of the balloon. <laughs> to rediscover what we knew was almost there, to find once again what was never really lost. It's your cash. It's your pain. It's your opinion. It's your game. They're your colors. They're your teams. They're your hopes. They're your dreams. Hold them close. Don't let them go. Trust your instincts and go with the flow. For in football's hallowed hall of fame, our exhibit is a cracker. Brazil have Pele, the Dutch have Cruyff. <laughs> but we've got Marca!
and all above her. <laughs> Did you eat ten gold on? Bertlin, last night. <laughs> Place was full of growlers. <laughs> Tell me, like a kennel club, you know. <laughs> There's hundreds of years. Who's on the night now? Is it Joseph and his multicolored jacket? <laughs> well, I tell you. I've never seen Joe on his jacket, but I bet you it's not as gallus as this. <laughs> Come on, this is class. And my name isn't Francis Frank Frankie Boy. <laughs> Macca Macaveni. <laughs> this is a new Macca, by the way. No, oh, I new Macca. Name here, Daft Boyness. Name our school dinners. <laughs> Name our diving expeditions for the sunken treasure. <laughs> Yous is looking at the you me. I had to do something though, you know, because when I first went down to London, you know, I, I can remember doing the Huckle Buck and String Fellows. <laughs> and singing along with Prince, I'm going to party till it's 1999. Then I woke up one day, <laughs> and it was 1999. <laughs> I had no recollection of 91 to 98, you know. <laughs> had a decade, you know, all right. So I took my, my bulls by the horn and sand. <laughs> That's it, Frankie boy. <laughs> it's time to call Canny. Screw the bobbin. <laughs> Stop down the pubes blonde. <laughs> I still keep in touch with my old mates for those mad mental days. They, they keep on asking me to write to them. <laughs> At least I think that's what they mean, because they asked me to drop them a line, you know? <laughs> Winding is up now, you know? <laughs> I'm finally sorting out my finances, though. Yes, got myself a financial advisor. His name's Nick Leeson. <laughs> oh, you've heard about him? Mm. He must be pretty good, because they made a film about him, you know. But I had to do something, you know, to get the, the Dodge situation clarified, because, you know, my life was like the on, on Guinness ad in the telly, you know. You know the one with the guys on the beach waiting for a surf, and the, the horses in the water and that? And the bloke says, Chick followed, chop, follow, chick. Follow chop. Well, with me, it was like, check, follow check, follow check, follow mail check. No. <laughs> Finally, it all caught up with me, you know. The bloke had done my bankruptcy for me, you know. He says, I drawed my luck for years. <laughs> I says to him, I don't know, I rode everything else, you know. <laughs> That's what folk get me around, you know, they just see me, the Frankie boy, as some sort of 
mad cereal rumper, you know. <laughs> and they're absolutely right, you know. <laughs> but I'm not the only one by all accounts are all at it. I mean, here's me Craig Brown. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's no Richard Gere, is he? <laughs> He's out there making mere passes in the Celtic midfield, you know. <laughs> Big Derek Johnson. I don't know, I just never saw Big DJ as the Mick Jagger of Scottish football, you know. <laughs> Good job, that all the same. Pundit. I could do that. <laughs> I could. I've got opinions. <laughs> Some of them I even thought of myself, you know. <laughs> what do I think of drugs in sport? Listen, in my day, drugs was sport. <laughs> See, Big Linford Christie's the latest one to get accused of taking on uh, performance enhancers. <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't know what it was he was meant to take, but I bet you it wasn't a Viagra, you know. <laughs> Have you checked it out? <laughs> Don't we choke a horse, you know? I'm <laughs> oh, See when you see him running in slow motion. It's like an airbag went off in his pants, you know. <laughs> Somebody says to me the other day, he says, uh, what do you think of Lubo? <laughs> I said, I don't know, what is it? Is it some kind of KY jelly? <laughs> Turns out they were talking about my Rav chick. <laughs> Seems that the other week against Hearts, he trapped a ball with his backside. I had some sympathy for the ball. <laughs> Having been trapped myself by many an arse in my time. <laughs> what do you think of me now, you know? <laughs> then there was the Bosnia Herzegovina match. Might have missed that, you know, because Herzegovina is definitely my favourite supermodel one, you know. <laughs> Maybe it's just as well, though, you know, because, I mean, it's hardly ideal viewing for a recovering birdaholic like myself. <laughs> Would I consider the Betty Ford Clinic for treatment for my sexaholism? I don't know. Is Betty worth a shag? <laughs> Any of you birds in here to join the breast enlargement stone, have you? You're not saying, are you? Toffs are in the night. Yeah, has your man not tried them out yet? Because I'm telling you, they feel kind of funny. You've got to watch the bounce or they could take your eye out, you know? <laughs> I knew this wee bird had them done. Oof, silicone. They're like traffic cones. <laughs> telling you. First time I wore precautions in bed. <laughs> no condoms, goalies gloves. <laughs> I crack me bird on the same. You have doll by the way. Actress. Mm. On it something at the Edinburgh Festival. She was on a all female lap dancing version of the Celtic story. <laughs> Called the Lesbo Lions. <laughs> Unfortunately, this uh, 
Witty V satire was somewhat missed uh, by the Frankie boy, but <laughs> I wasn't bothered. Because you've seen other than. <laughs> Tell me, everything. TFTL. Tits Fanny the Lux. <laughs> Me here for Milton tonight. <laughs> ah, cool, not mean. Here's a wee song for you. Come with me, come right now to a place that is the best. Where the hospitality is so warm, you don't need a thermal vest. Where we are going, pure turn up is better than all the rest. Let's see it! 